Hey everyone, welcome and thank you for being here today. So I'm about to hit a million subscribers here on YouTube and I just want to thank you guys for your great support over the years. I've been teaching on YouTube and putting out videos for a little over six years and this is a big goal and I just appreciate every one of you guys for your comments, you know, subscribing, for watching my tutorials. So today I'm making a full lesson and also this painting I'll be giving away to one of you. All you have to do to enter is comment your favorite lesson I've done and what you would like to see more of in the future on my channel. Once we hit a million, I'll use a randomizer to select the winner and then I'll announce it on my next video that I'm gonna put out. So this is exciting guys and I'm also excited to get to this lesson so let's get straight to it and go over the materials needed for today. All right, so I'm using a 14 by 18 studio canvas. It already has gesso coat on it so I don't need to add anything to it. The only thing I did to prepare my canvas was I added a glaze of water all over my canvas just all over cover everything real quick I already did this step but I'm just showing you that you just want to cover it all with water and what that does is if you let it naturally dry it'll stretch out the loose ends and your canvas becomes nice and firm for brushes, I'm going to use two of my M1 blending brushes and then I'm going to use an M2 blending brush. This is a size smaller than the M1. Basically, since we're going to be covering a little portion, little part, I'm going to use the M2 for the little parts to lay out with water and paint and I'll show you. And then with my M1 blending brush, I'm going to blend all the colors in. Next, I'm going to use my four piece brush set right here and I'll show you what's inside. We have the number eight and a number four. They're the same thing, just the size smaller. They're like Filbert style. They were great on little parts of adding effects for the leaves, for the grass, and little, port, little parts of blending. And I'll show you, I use these a lot. So that's what's inside. And then also we're gonna use a half an inch flat brush and then a zero detail brush for all the little branches and little details. We're also going to use an artist sponge. These were great to create branches and leaves and it comes in a pack so you can pick and choose which one you like to work with best but when you squeeze you're going to get a little bit of a you know, finer, like smaller kind of gaps in between, right? But if you leave it more open, you're going to get bigger gaps for bigger areas. Um, so you, you can play around with, with an artist sponge and create cool effects. For paint, I'm going to use my 24 set of acrylics and I'll show you which colors I'm going to use from this set. Medium yellow, orange, sap green, Viridian, Thalo Blue, and Lamb Black. From my five set of acrylics, I'm going to use Titanium White. For palette, I'm going to use my palette paper here. These were great. It comes in 40 sheets. Once I'm done adding all my paint, I just tear the sheet apart and start fresh. Works really nice and saves a bunch of time. We need a palette knife to mix your paint and also make sure the palette knife is soft because when you come to mix your paint, it'll mix your paint evenly because there are some palette knives that are stiff and it doesn't mix as well. So make sure when you get a palette knife, it's soft, bends nicely. Some paper towels. We need a jar of water and you want your water to be next to your canvas so that it'll be easy access. And finally, if you have a hair dryer, use it. It works great to dry out your first coats before applying your next layers. But if you don't, usually it dries, acrylics dry between 20 to 30 minutes, so you can let it naturally dry. But I do encourage you guys to let it dry before adding any more layers on top. Okay, that'll be all for the materials. You could use anything you have available, but if you're interested in using what I'm using, check out my website at colorbyfelix.com. These tutorials are meant for you to practice and hopefully catch some techniques and implement it into your artworks and get better and better each time you paint. Hopefully you can 
learn from this lesson a lot and uh, are able to improve in your artwork. So the goal here is to create a forest, like a misty forest with trees right here and then also bushes and like uh, maybe plants around here and then a little river right in here with some rocks. That's the plan. I like to start from the furthest distance and work my way up to the closest and that is the sky, right? So we're gonna cover a little portion of the sky right here and then the next thing we're gonna add some faraway trees and start to add more layers and fog and, and uh, more trees closer to us and then sketch out our bushes and the river here and then detail everything and work our way closer and closer. And once we kind of get everything laid out and somewhat of some details added, right, we will take a step back and then look at it and, and see if we need to add anything or correct anything. It's super easy to correct with acrylics because you, you just paint over it. If you don't like something, you can just paint over it, right? So don't worry about making mistakes. You know, you, you, to this day, I'm still learning a lot and I'm, I'm improving and I feel like I'm, you know, the more I paint, the more I catch myself correcting and, and kind of adjusting and becoming better naturally, right? Without forcing it. So have fun with this and take breaks, you know, like uh, work in sections. I like to work in sections. So once you finish the part and you feel like you need time to rest, go ahead and do that. So let's mix some colors for our sky. Let's start with titanium white. We're going to create about four colors. So I like to start from the corner of my palette and I'm going to squeeze about, since I'm not covering too much of the sky, I'm going to just add about a thumb amount of white here. I'm not going to add too much to my sky yet because we're not covering that much. Okay. So, and then each time a little less and then a little less and last one. So just a little less, but almost the same amount. And always close your lid once you're done so that the paint won't dry out. Next, we're gonna add phthalo blue, a very, very small amount, barely anything right there, okay? You can see just a small little touch so that we can have a hint of blue in our sky. And then I'm gonna close the lid. And then next, we're gonna pick up medium yellow medium yellow and we're gonna add a little bit in here not a lot maybe a little more than that blue on this one and then next we're gonna add viridian a small amount in here as well and then a little bit more in here okay a little more in there and then also I'm gonna add a little bit of orange to this one small touch of orange right there and a little bit in here not a lot very small amount like this okay and once we're done adding our colors I make sure the lid lids are closed and I'm gonna pick up my palette knife and I'm gonna start mixing so start from this corner and we're gonna quickly mix our colors you could see a hint of blue in this in our sky we want that but we want it to be bright okay so i'm going to mix it like this and once i'm done i'm going to make a little pile like this okay and then i'm going to move on to my next color okay And now we're going to move on to the next one. And this is like the base of our sky. So we're going to obviously add a lot of details. And this is just the background colors that will show through the canvas, through the trees. So obviously we'll add more to our because we're painting a forest, right? Misty forest. But we want to create a nice base. So there you go. So blue going into yellow, transitioning to this green, because we want on the bottom parts, we want it to be like a more of a shaded, darker green. 
And by the way, the way I clean my pout knife, I just dab it in the water jar right here all the way and then use a paper towel to quickly wipe it off. And that saves a lot of time and it will be ready for the next use. Okay, so we're gonna cover about this much right here. And if we go a little lower, that's okay. All of this is gonna be covered anyway, but let's just cover this area. And so I'm gonna pick up my M2 blending brush and a jar of water. I'm gonna dab it all the way in the water and squeeze part of it out. Okay, not everything but part of it. You want a little water still in there, but you don't want too much. And I'm gonna put the water jar right next to my canvas where it's gonna be you know, easy access. And when I say I'm dabbing my brush in the water, um, just the tip of my brush, I'm just lightly dabbing it lightly in the water, and then I'll pick up more paint if I need to, right? So that's what I'll be doing. The water jar is right next to the painting now. These are the colors I have mixed, remember? It doesn't have to look exactly like mine, but something similar will do, okay? All right, with my M2, I'm gonna start with the blue. Let's just start with this color and work our way this way. I'm gonna just pick up all the colors here and we're gonna have the sky right in the corner, right here randomly. You see how you see the bubbles here? But if your water starts to drip, like right here, it's about to drip, that means I have too much water, so I'm gonna pick up more paint and no more water. And I'm gonna try to equalize it, blend it, and make sure it's a little thicker, but it runs smooth like butter on the canvas, right? It's not like dragging. And if it's dragging, that's when you feel like you need more water, and that's when I will dab my brush in water. It's, and this, this is a good thing to practice. So a little more paint. And when you see bubbles, that's a good sign. That means you have the right amount of water and paint. But if you see water dripping, that means you have too much water, okay? Just keep that in mind and practice. So I'm dabbing my brush lightly in the water. I'm gonna pick up my next color, this yellow. Start to kind of add it around, around here, okay? So maybe more blue. Use up all the blue and then lightly dab my brush in the water, not all the way, and then pick up the rest of the yellow. And then let's just continue adding it. And then as we go down, I'm gonna lightly dab my brush in the water, pick up more of this color. As we go to the next um, side here, I'm gonna add this next color. I'm dabbing my brush in the water. This is a quick process, by the way. So quickly laid out. And then as you go down and dab my brush in the water, I'm going to use this color. Okay, I'm kind of blending, but not blending yet. I'm swirling, mixing the colors in together, but I'm not really blending. I'm not focusing on making it perfect yet. Okay, so just randomly, and you can go low as well. Let's have this add it right in here. So I'm gonna dab lightly my brush in water, mix these colors together, because it's closer to the lighter areas. And then as you go down, you can use the darker. So it's closer to the light coming from here. And this is more of a darker area on the right side. That's why I added the light more right here. Okay, so something like this, use up everything as the base, okay? Once it's evenly spread, I'm gonna put my brush down in the water jar, pick up, quickly pick up my dry M1 blending brush and swirl gently and press and kind of blend the colors in, take away the brush strokes, okay? Just like this. Lightly swirl and blend all your colors in. Don't press too hard and start from where the lightest areas are and work your way to the darker shadows, darker colors. Okay. Just like this, real quick and easy. OK, 
Okay, there you go. So now I'm gonna let this dry. And while this dries, I'm gonna clean my brushes so that my blending brushes won't sit in the water too long. And then we'll continue adding our next layers. Okay, our background is dry and I got a new water jar. So now I'm going to, by the way, I'm gonna let my number eight and number four brushes sit in the water jar for a few minutes because it makes my brushes softer, which allows me to, you know, blend and, you know, create a more of a smoother kind of effect with a little bit of damp brush, right? Water in there, right? So that's why I'm gonna let it soak a little bit and let the brush relax. And we're gonna create our further away trees, like kind of misty looking trees, going into more of sharper and closer trees with dark leaves and shadows and things like that. So um, these are the colors I mixed and we're gonna create another layer and then we're gonna keep adding until we're happy with it, right? But this is the next step. We're get, I added here a thumb amount of white, thumb amount of white here and then a little less on on this one and a lot more or less on this one and then next I added a small amount of yellow medium yellow and then medium yellow here and a touch of orange and viridian you could see very very small amount and then a little more orange here and more viridian here and then a little more viridian on this one and sap green I'm gonna mix these colors and see if I need to add more and show you what I get. All right, so as I was mixing, I decided to add a little bit more color and I cleaned my palette knife real quick. And what I added here is orange, a small amount of orange, and then viridian and phthalo blue. And then a little more viridian and lamb black right here. So I'm gonna mix this one and then mix these and show you what I get. And finally, I added lamp black. I'm gonna take part of this white, a little bit, this yellow white color here and take part of this green like this, mix it in. I'm gonna create a little bit of a darker kind of grayish green color. Okay, something like this. So it's almost similar shade like this one but this one's more gray less green okay all right so with these colors I've mixed right here we're gonna start to add the next layers so with our number eight brush make sure you dab it in the water tap it on the paper towel right you want to take away some water and so that it's nice and soft it has a little bit of water it's damp right but it's not it doesn't have a ton of water but when you when we, we want a little bit of water in here because then it really blends in nicely to the background colors we've already added, right? So that's because we wanna make it look kind of misty. So that's why it's uh, nice to have the brush damp. So first, let's start with number eight and this kind of orangey color right here. We have mixed and we're gonna create some kind of further away trees, randomly dab it. You can barely see it and that's what we want. We don't want to, you know, we don't want a lot of color, just a little bit randomly all over right here. Use more of that orangey color, go in a little bit, and then we'll fade it out. Adding a little bit of color makes, you know, makes it more interesting. So let's add a little bit that orange let's continue adding it let's add some on this side for fun just a little bit randomly you can barely see so i'm not like trying to make it perfect but we just want a little glaze little color from the light All right, 
So far that's good. Next, we're going to add the next color and that will be dab my brush lightly in the water and tap it on the paper towel. I'm not gonna clean my brush all the way. If it has a little bit of that orange, that's okay. Actually, I'm gonna be mixing them together anyway. So use a little bit of this next color and we're gonna create another tree, another further away tree. Okay, so you can see it's starting to stand out a little more. So I'm gonna use this orange more, mix it in together randomly and continue kind of adding Use a little more of this color. And it'll, it'll all make sense once we start to add a little more, you know, once we start adding more and more detail, you kind of start to see the picture more and more come to life. Continue adding this color. Just by dabbing randomly like this. Let's add that on this side. We're gonna use the artist sponge here for these areas as well. I'm just adding a quick glaze first. Kind of shaping out. And detailing, or I mean adding our first base before using the brush, the artist sponge, I mean. Okay. Now we're gonna use, continue adding this on here randomly. And we'll fade it out. Continue using, let's dab my brush slightly in the water. Let's mix this and this little bit of a green color. And we're gonna add it right in here in the middle, skip some areas because we want the background to be showing as well. So I'm not gonna cover too much, but here I want to create a little greener kind of shade as we go in, in the darker areas. Okay, dab my brush lightly in the water and tap it on the paper, uh, paper towel and continue a little bit of that green in this color we will start to add a little more randomly like this. And now 
we'll use just the green by itself. And actually for this part, since we're covering the bigger section, we're gonna, let's switch our brush to the artist sponge and we're gonna soak the brush and we're just gonna dab it all the way in the water, all the way and kind of squeeze it and make it soft and then squeeze out all our water, okay? All the water out so it could be nice and soft. And now we're just gonna randomly cover everything randomly like this using our artist sponge, you know, and randomly we're just gonna kind of start to add a little more darker colors detail, I mean. A little more rough edges. Same thing on this side. Let's add that nice green color on the corner. And we'll bring it out a little bit. And you can play around with your artist sponge, like move it around and squeeze it and create smaller details you can go back to this color randomly fade it out let's use this color maybe with orange randomly mix those colors and add a little bit in here a little darker there you go back to the dark green now I'm going to clean my sponge all the way um, squeeze it in and kind of clean your sponge a little bit all the uh, darker paint and then we're going to use a little bit of the orange and let's use this green randomly mix that and i'm going to add some in here Let's quickly pick up our number eight brush, tap it on the paper towel to clean the water, and we're gonna just try to make this bottom area a little softer with water, press a little bit, and kind of take away a little bit of the sharp, sharpness out of, that, out of this area. Okay, same thing here. Let's actually use a little bit of this yellow to make it a little lighter. Tap it on the, in the water and on the paper towel so it can blend well like this. We wanna create a smoother kind of surface. Just on the bottom here for now. Actually, we'll go over the top as well. And part of this is gonna be covered here, so I'm not too worried about. Let's use a little bit of this color. Randomly 
we add it all over in there and use the screen and kind of take away a little bit of the tap it on the water or dab your brush in the water I'm sorry and tap it on the paper towel and kind of swirl your brush around and it's gonna fill in some of the take away some of the rough areas we want it to still look soft okay Dab my brush slightly in the water let's do the same thing on this side Let's use a little bit of this orange, maybe mix it with this and add a little bit more in here. Okay, maybe a little more of this color. A little more orange. on this side just by dabbing randomly everywhere we want to create the glow of the of the branches and I know it looks rough right now but bear with me it's gonna start to come to life in a little bit okay so before I continue I'm gonna sketch out let's pick up our number four brush dab it in the water and remember this color here we have mixed let's use a little bit of this color and make sure your brush is, has water in it a little bit of water in this color and we're going to kind of create some faded let's use a little bit of a lighter color In this color, we're going to continue. Okay, a little more of this color. And then dab it in the water. Actually, let's switch because I want to create some smaller ones. So let's use our flat brush. And use this color with our flat brush and some water we're gonna create some smaller ones Let's continue with this color.
Okay, let's go back to this darker color with water and this color. I'm gonna go over, create a couple. Now back to number four brush and let's use this color. Lightly dab your brush in water and tap it on the paper towel and lightly glaze it over some of these darker areas. We don't want it to look sharp. We kind of want it to look faded, that's why. By adding a little bit of water and going over your trees again, it makes it more faded. So, a little more. in water again so basically I do I it's a you know I do this often to pick up more paint I just quickly dab it in the water tap it on the paper towel so you know okay what I'm doing I just I'm just letting you guys know exactly what I'm doing so hopefully I'm not being annoying repeating myself often but just trying to make sure I don't miss nothing here that is important all these little details, you know, that I'm doing, they're important 
Um, that is why I don't want to miss anything because I really do want you guys to, you know, catch the technique and make sure to um, that you guys are able to follow along and have fun creating this one, right? And this, you know, that's what it takes to to create a painting. You just have to keep adding and adding and adding until you're happy. In the beginning, it looks messy, right? But the more you, layers you add, it'll it'll really start to pop and stand out. So be patient, take your time, you know. Um, and just work at your pace. So I'm adding a little bit of a, this darker kind of tone. Lightly dab my brush in water and use more of this color. And I just want to create a little bit of a darker. this color maybe a little darker I just I'm trying to create a smoother transition from that light going into this darker area Make some thicker ones on this side. So actually, I'm going to make one that is thick, thicker tree with this dark color. I'm going to create it and make it right in here. This one, right? I want to make it a little thicker so that we have variety. I'm going to make it and, and let it kind of go up and go all the way to the top. That's good right there. I'm going to add a, lit, a little bit of black, a little bit of black and mix, mix this color, the darkest color with the black real quick. This leftover color we have mi mixed, maybe take part of this so it won't be too dark. But we want it a little darker than that one. Okay, something like this. The goal is to just keep it a little darker than this color. And with our number four, I'm going to create another darker one. And it's going to be... I'm going to add it right next to this tree. Let's... I 
oops, I have too much water, so I'm gonna tap it on the paper towel and just use the paint. So it looks a little too um, similar to the other colors. So actually I'm gonna add a little more black and I'm gonna add a little more, let's add viridian, a little more viridian. I'll show you what I have. So a little bit of black and viridian with this color, I'm gonna mix it. Okay, something like this. We are going to use our number four brush and we're gonna create some darker ones. Make this one a little bit thicker. And as you go down, you wanna make it a little wider on the bottom. And we'll fade it out. Okay. Let's add another dark one in here. Maybe this one's a little bit smaller. Skinnier, I mean. Let's add another one right in here. We're going to add, I'm just wondering if I should make a thicker one, right? I think I'm going to make a thick one right in here next to this tree, kind of overlapping. And I'm going to make it. So a lot of the background is going to be covered but I want to make my tree stand out. So this is what it takes. Just gotta keep adding until you're happy with your trees. So this one will be the biggest tree. And then down my brush in water. And this is like the base of our trees and we're going to obviously go over again and add a little more detail As you go down, I want to make it a little wider. You could use a little bit of this lighter color. Randomly add it in here, why not? Like I said, we're going to go over this tree, go over these trees again, but just kind of glazing it randomly like this. So now we have a little more detail going on. Now I'm going to add a little more color. So basically 
we're going to use a little bit of black and viridian straight out of the tube and we're going to take this yellow um, I don't want paint, paint to go to waste about this much and let's randomly mix it okay so I'm gonna add a little more black just because I see that it's uh, we, we're gonna create some more trees in here so so just a little more black basically we want it similar to this color you know or th these two colors right here so I'm not worried about making it exactly but you know somewhat similar will be good enough okay so something like this right now we're gonna continue let's use our flat brush real quick I want to create some skinnier ones in here let's add let's add a little bit of a let's add let's add this color with a little bit of water and maybe a little bit of this mix those two so this leftover color here and this randomly and we're going to add some darker but smaller ones in here same thing in here let's actually add the dark one And let's go Let's add tree right in here. Kind of, you know, bending. Make this one a little thicker. And as you go down, a little wider. And fill it in with this color
let's go back to number four and this color same color we're gonna create a couple branches here from this tree Use my detail brush, same color with water. And this paint, I'm gonna create a couple smaller branches. You can add as much as you want. And I'm barely pressing onto the canvas. So you see, I have some water and paint and I'm swirling and basically going back and forth and barely pressing.
I'm going to spend some time creating all the details I want to this, to all the branches I want, right? I'm gonna spend some time adding as much branches as I want to my trees, right? Same thing here. I'm gonna go over and add all my branches on this side, okay? Same idea with water and that color first. We're gonna just work our way and add as much branches as we want.
All right, so let's go back to this color. And kind of glaze it right in here. Okay, so now I'm going to add more leaves on top and start to add more detail now that we have a sketch of our trees and kind of the layout of the background. So this is what I added, a little bit of titanium white, like half a thumb amount, and then less than that here, and then sap green, like a thumb amount of sap green, and then medium yellow, a little bit of that, and then sap green here, viridian, and lamb black right here. All right, so it's very bright and I want to make it a little bit less bright and so I added a little more white actually. So I'm going to leave these colors because I might use them, but I'm going to take part of it, maybe half, and mix it with the white just to kind of take away a little bit of that darkness and brightness. Okay, so mix that and then clean my palette and take half of this, mix it with the white here. Maybe actually take a little more than that. So it won't be too white. We still want that green. And randomly mix it, right? It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. It could be any kind of green like this. So something like this will be good to go, okay? So now I'm gonna use my artist sponge and kind of start with a light kind of greenish color here right and we're gonna just randomly add it our leaves barely pressing onto the canvas so i'm gonna kind of add my leaves all over the place here and I want that blue to sh still show through, so I don't want to overdo it. But you can, you can overlap your trees that you painted because we're gonna obviously go over and add more detail. But you could see I'm kind of lightly pressing and adding a little more color to my trees. So a little bit right in here and where the branches, where we added the branches. Okay. Using a little bit right here, not too much. Pressing just a little bit right in here okay and in here as well follow the branches lightly don't press too hard okay all right so continue and we're gonna add some branches in here a little bigger ones maybe there's you know 
leaves coming down from the top. And again, we're gonna add more detail and kind of go over everything, so I'm not too worried about, you know, any mistakes that I make or going over my trees, right? Kind of go over the branches. Use the corner and lightly add randomly go over in here maybe there's a branch that's coming from this side okay so next we're gonna use this darker one that we have mixed and I'm not gonna clean my brush or my sponge I'm just gonna use it as it is and with this color we're gonna start to add a little darker shadows behind here it's a lot of back and forth but it's worth it if you take your time and you don't want to overdo it. You still want to see the light coming through the background. So we don't want to cover too much. I'm going to use a little of this green mixed with this. Why not? Go in here a little and press and make my branches a little darker green. Same thing, so mix this and this green that we've mixed, lightly press. Okay, and then we're gonna go in here and create a darker kind of color, the same idea, this and this color. And we're just gonna go over some of these in here. Use this darker color and let's just create darker shadows in here. go to this green and maybe a little bit of this lighter green actually and let's just add a little more branches in here a little bit of a lighter color maybe use this actually the green is fine Maybe use this darkest color, right? 
and kind of go in. I want to darken some more in here. Make it even more detailed. More popping out. on some of these areas there you go with a little bit of white and medium yellow I'm gonna mix that and we're gonna create some bright bright uh, little branches and leaves plants on the bottom with something like this this color and we're gonna use let's use our number four brush uh, clean it out and dab it on a paper towel to clean out the water and let's use this color to kind of start to randomly add little highlights little brighter highlights Let's have a little bit of this green actually so it won't be too bright. some of these plants real quick few little highlights follow the branches clean my brush out to use maybe this orange a little bit and actually let's use this color okay I want to take away some of these greens right in here the green color back to the yellow ok 
continue adding the yellow glaze or little taps little little taps all over your branches some in here Let's have this green. Let's use that and create a couple lighter branches in here. And then back to our detail brush and water with a little bit of water and this color again, right? We're going to go over and add a little bit of connect these branches, right? Connecting lightly. I'm barely pressing and I'm just creating my fine little branches with water and this color. And then you can go over some of your branches, right? And connect to some of these um, leaves that we just added. For example, right here, right? I want to connect that. Same thing here. And this is just a lot of back and forth little details. You could spend a lot of time on, on this part. It's totally up to you. But you get the idea. We to create as much little details and as we can before adding more on top right all right next let's add a little bit of black and white straight out of the tube and let's just take part of this and this darkest green color mix mix it with this black color we want a nice dark shade like this and what we're gonna do is use a little bit of this color mix it with white just a little bit so it'll look kind of grayish green like that and randomly we're gonna start to go over with our let's use our number four brush and we're gonna start with the darkest actually I'm gonna add a little more black I want it to be very dark so I added a little more black here okay just a little more black okay something like this all right with these two colors we're gonna use our number four brush clean it out and starting with the black, we're gonna go over our tree. Remember the light is coming this way, so the left side of our tree is gonna be 
and dark. And then as you go in, we're going to add this lighter color. Add the glaze. something like this okay and dab a brush in the water use this darkest color again and do the same thing to this one and we are going over our, our um our branches that we added but it's okay because we can If we wanted to go over again and and add our branches we can you know so it's totally fine and then go back to the light color a little more highlights You can use a little bit of this yellow. Go back to that grayish color. Oops, too much, that's okay. Clean my brush use the dark color it's a lot of back and forth but it'll be worth it once we're done Now let's use this kind of dark color with a little bit of that lighter color and we'll just lightly go over some background colors here. So this side, the darker color is going to be more on the 
left side. In the middle. All right, with our number four, remember this color, lightish, lightish yellow color. With this gray, we're going to mix those two together. And we're going to go over and try to make this stand out a little more. Okay, so now I'm going to spend some time kind of going over and adding as much detail as I want. It's basically the same thing as I showed you guys with the artist sponge or your number four, number eight brush or a detail brush to kind of add more branches and make things a little more cleaner and sharper. And that's totally up to you how, you, how much time you want to spend on this, okay? But basically, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little more detail and then we're going to continue to the next section, okay? Okay, I'll call it good for this section. You can spend as much time as you want. You can see I added a bunch of branches and kind of went back and forth adding my little details, having fun with it. So now, now we're going to continue and adding the base of our little river here and like patches of grass right here on the side. And But the last thing I wanted to show you, this is a cool trick that I enjoy using sometimes, actually a lot in most of my paintings, is I'm going to add a glaze over some of this area in the back to make it more like kind of glowy look so this could be even brighter and i already added that a little bit but i wanted to show you what i did so you guys can have an idea so let's add phthalo blue in a corner just a little bit like this and we're going to pick up our m2 blending brush okay m2 blending brush and we're going to dab it all the way in the water like we, we do when we're laying out our colors for blending. Okay, so we have a little bit of water here. And what, what I like to do to add a glaze is use a little bit of this color blue, this stale blue color, just a little bit. You could see it's, it has a lot of water, in, not a lot, but it has water in here in my brush. But I'm not taking a lot of paint, I'm just taking a little bit, okay? And I'm going to glaze it over some of these areas. For example, I want this to be a little more, more bluer right here, maybe in here as well. Okay, so what I like to do is kind of glaze, and you can go over everything. Kind of glaze that blue. You can go over part of your uh, um, details you already added, but what that does is create a nice cool tone And that's basically the last step before we continue adding our water. But this makes it more like look a little more cooler on the bottom here. And I just like the way it looks adding a glaze. And I also added a little bit of this glaze on some of these areas inside here on the right side. Add a glaze on top here. And you, you probably can't see it on the camera that well, but it makes a big difference. So when I, um, so this add, you can also add glaze of, of like yellow or white, any kind of glaze to, to kind of soften your middle area, right? Or brighten your middle area. You can add a glaze of yellow if you wanted to, right? So you can have a lot of fun with this part. It's not really painting over anything. It's just adding that extra, color in the background so this area right here makes it cooler looking 
okay so there you go and that's basically the last part of the process and now we're ready to move on I'm gonna add a little more right in here maybe on top in this corner randomly and there you go you could see that nice kind of blue um, glow and the light here's it's it's brighter right we want we want this kind of to be darker around and brighter in here and now let's mix our colors and create the base of our river and patches of grass by the way i used paper towel i dab it in the water right and i just wiped a little bit of that blue paint away so that i can continue using my paper palette here and here we go a thumb amount of white here a thumb amount of white here and then a little bit of white here less white here and then medium yellow sap green a little more sap green and medium yellow same amount and smaller amount of sap green and viridian and then more viridian here phthalo blue and a touch of lamp black i'm going to mix these and show you what i get as I was mixing, I decided to add actually a little more sap green and viridian to this one because it's pretty similar colors and I want my river to be more on a little bit of a darker side. So I'm gonna take part of this, mix it in with these colors here. And last, I decided to add even a darker color, phthalo blue and lamb black, and I'm gonna take part of this color mix it in with this one this will be the darkest all right so we're gonna add the base of our river right here and these are the colors I have we're gonna try to use these right here and I might use this we'll see but uh, let's use these colors here first I'm gonna pick up my M2 blending brush dab it in the water squeeze it out okay and we're gonna start with let's just start with this light one and there's going to be a couple bushes here so i'm not worried about so i'm going to just kind of glaze it right here okay next i know it's not a lot but quickly glaze these add these colors randomly maybe go back to the screen lighter color i know it's random but we're just adding the base so and as you go lower actually a little more right here and then this part i'm going to use the darkest color here darkest blue color you can go in a little bit in here and we're just gonna swirl and add that nice dark shade right in here about this much okay and now i'm going to use my m1 blending brush dry and i'm going to kind of swirl gently and blend everything in quickly it's a quick process maybe even go like this lightly i'm barely pressing okay and it covers the canvas nicely and here we go we got the base of our river while this dries i'm going to quickly rinse off my blending brushes and then we're going to continue adding more details next we are going to fill in these areas here as the base add the base here and then we're going to start to work on adding the details to our river so this is what i added a little bit of lamp black to uh, we're going to create one lighter one darker and so i'm just going to take part of this let's take the remainder of this blue and add it right there and a little bit of this green 
and mix it in here randomly. Okay. Let's actually use part of this color, make it a little bit less dark. That's good enough right there. It's like a grayish green color. And then take part of this color, mix it in with the black here. This will be the darker color. And we'll add the base to those areas real quick. Okay, something like this. Now I'm gonna pick up my number eight brush and tap it on the paper towel to get most of the water out. And we're gonna use this color here. Okay, and we're gonna start to, you see this tree? We're gonna kind of, kind of dab and create a little bit of a, and as we go further, let's actually use this green, maybe mix it with that lighter color. I wanna create a lighter color shade, it fading out. Okay, like this, randomly, okay, and then continue with the darker color we have mixed right here. We're just going to try to fill this in here as the base. Okay, now we can go to the darker color, fill in this area here. I think I want to, I want to cover about, it's probably going to be up, up to here. That's where This is the base, so we're gonna obviously add more details, but the background will be covered. And as we go in, I'm gonna go back to this green color and start to, actually, yeah, that's fine. Let it go in a little bit, make it a little darker. go back to the darkest color, lightly tap, and kind of cover that area up real quick with the darkest color so that the background will be, the base will be dark. And then when we go in to add the lighter colors, we're going to detail everything a little more. Here, I want to actually create, make it look a little more bigger. Maybe coming in like this. Okay, that's good enough for right now. Okay, and then as we go in here, we're gonna do the same th thing. With the darkest color, we're gonna go in and let's add, maybe there, 
there's some rocks in here. In the water. The darkest color. this bigger rock here and we can go to this green color Make it a little lighter in here. And then a little bit of this color. A little bit of darker color right in here. I'm going to clean my brush real quick and kind of tap the brush on a paper towel to clean most of the paint and real quick I'm going to use this green color and we're going to add a little detail to our far away plants and things like that. I'm kind of following the patterns, you know, creating, remember that glow you want, that glow to hit the top of your plants and then it fading out to the dark shadows. And we could, you could also use your number four brush if you want for the little parts. I'm just kind of sketching out real quick to get an idea where I want my details and to be. For example, right here, I'm going to brighten this area because the light is hitting on top, right? Okay, and now continue on with this. I'm going to actually add medium yellow to my color, just a little bit more yellow because I want it to be a little more towards the green. So I added a touch of medium yellow to this color and I want to make it a little more green as I go in. Okay, randomly mix that. Something like this will do. And we're going to continue doing the same, same thing with our number eight. And we're just going to tap and start to kind of create a little more
detail. Something like that. Same thing here. Let's or the grass on our rocks here. And this bigger rock. Right in here. Now we got the sketch of our kind of grass and rocks going on here. Now I'm going to use my number four brush. I'm going to add a little bit of rocks kind of in my river and start to create more of a flow to my river, right? But before I do that, let's just use this color here. And let's create, remember this rock here? Let's uh, create a little... rocks here because we want this to be kind of more flowing the river Use a little bit of a darker color and mix those two in. I want to create a little bit of a darker on the bottom right in here. Let's continue. I think I'm going to add a little bit of a darker rock in here. Why 
not. Okay, I'm gonna clean my brush real quick and then use Let's mix, uh, let's use this color and mix it with uh, green, make it a little lighter. So this color and this one, I'm gonna try to make it a little lighter. And we're gonna do the same thing, but further up in here. As we go up, there'll be little rocks and, and in our river. Use the darker color now this one and on the bottom I'm gonna create a little more shadows Use a little bit of this darker color, the darkest one. And on the bottom, we're gonna add more of that. Dark sh um, shade. back to the second darkest color dab my brush in the water clean it off the color a little bit and I'm gonna use this maybe this blue actually and this darkest color this uh, viridian color okay with a little bit of water and we're going to kind of create a little bit of ripples and details to our river here now I'm going to brush lightly in the water Here I'm going to use a little bit of phthalo blue, the leftover, maybe with some black, mix those two. And I'm going to try to create a little gl shadow glaze. switch to 
number eight brush real quick, clean it out. And I'm going to use the same thing, that phthalo blue with some water, and a little bit of this darkest color. I'm gonna try to make it a little softer here. So a little more darker color with the blue. create some shadows. Add more rocks here. Maybe these rocks are a little bit under the river, you know. You kind of tell. Actually, let's add a little bit of orange and we're going to make underwater rocks. Just a few and why not make some fun underwater rocks. So I added a little bit of orange right there. I'm going to take part of this green, leftover green, mix it in with the orange. Maybe take this color, you know, mix it in. So it can look kind of greenish, a little bit of orange. Maybe phthalo blue, or I mean this viridian. I don't want it to be too orange actually, but a little bit of it is good. That's much better right there. So with this color, something like this, okay? So with this color, we're gonna create some rocks, underwater rocks, why not? So with my number four brush, I'm gonna Use now this viridian with some water. And then this viridian with the darkest color, but we want a hint of it. start to add some more rocks let's use this color that we just mixed and add let's make this on rock underwater as well Use a little bit of this color again and create more rocks underwater. Go back to this color again and make this rock underwater as well. To 
head back to this viridian and the blue and try to fade it out to the blue color. a little bit of this color kind of go over to make it look a little softer once the paint dries you know adding the second layer will make it more smoother and cleaner so uh, that's why actually I prefer acry acrylics to dry fast you know some people are always w wondering oh no but I need to work fast you know because acrylics dry fast but uh, actually once you realize that it's better that the um once you catch some techniques that it dries fast because when you add m more layers on top it'll really make take away all the brush strokes and the sharpness you know um of your painting so um now i'm going back and forth and using this and viridian you know this color maybe even some lighter colors but for example right there i want to make it a little more yellow a little more brighter green right there I'm going to add a little glaze. Right, and then use a little more of this color and add a glaze right here. I'm going to go back to my viridian color and kind of fill in this area. a little bit of this color and let's add a few more little highlights maybe these are rocks that you can barely see let's add another rock right in here Okay, and now we're going to go back to, I'm going to add some more um, phthalo blue. And we're going to work on adding some shadows. So clean my number four brush and with a little bit of, with uh, a little bit of phthalo blue in this darkest color we have mixed. I'm going to make sure I don't have too much water, so I'm tapping it on a paper towel. And with this color, we're going to kind of go in and create the uh, shadows in our rocks, underwater rocks. OK, 
okay little darker shadows Continue on. Use my number number eight brush and then add a little bit of glaze of the phthalo blue and a little bit of this darker color but mostly phthalo blue we're gonna add that nice dark glaze right in here over this side I want this side to be a little darker And why not, let's add a little underwater log or branch. So what we're gonna do is with the flat brush, we're gonna use this darker color with the blue a little bit. And we're just gonna create a little log, maybe coming from this side. Maybe there's two logs, so let's bring this one down this way. And then one with water and the blue one will have one like this. Okay, and I'm gonna clean my brush and then use a little bit of this color, remember, and Viridian. Let's mix those two and we're just gonna go on top. We're gonna add A little highlight okay just like that all right so this now you could kind of see that these couple logs are underwater it just creates a little bit of a more makes the painting more interesting when we add these kind of details and i'm going to add a little branch kind of coming out of here let's 
same idea this color we have mixed and right on top gently with water All right, so now I'm gonna add a little more highlights, lighter highlights, so using my clean my number four brush, make sure I don't have any dark colors on there, and tap it on the paper towel. And with titanium white by itself, we're gonna use titanium white and a little bit of water, and we're gonna start to add lighter kind of foam and highlights in our river. For example, right in here, I'm gonna add And we're going to be, you know, going back and forth and trying to. So actually, I'm looking at this and I don't like that I made this part too green. So what I'm going to do is use a little bit of this green. I mean, light green. I want to make it a little darker in this viridian. I'm going to make this area a little darker. Okay, maybe use a little bit of this and Viridian. Make it a little darker because when we go go to add that light foam, it's gonna really stand out. So that's why I don't wanna make it. Maybe use a little bit of this. There you go. lighter green in here this green and viridian we're going to add it right in here shadow in my oops let's use this one this color right here with a little bit of water in your brush I'm gonna create shadows in my water so I'm using a my brush has a little bit of water and so because of that it runs smoothly on the canvas when I press it uh, blends in nicely press and kind of play with the colors here So behind I can I can make it a little lighter so I'm gonna use this color I'm gonna make it a little lighter right in here so 
So I'll use this color. It's actually a perfect color right here for the base for the far away. Down my brush lightly in the water, continue using that color. Trying to make a flow. Gently press and work your way this way. this color. I'm going to continue. Now I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to use white, plain white with my number four and some water and we're just going to start to create a little more detail in our river. come down here and we're gonna glaze right here this is where the water kind of falls right and dab your brush in the water and tap it on the paper towel and then pick up more white and continue adding the foam and the kind of detail to your river here. Remember the water is coming here and it's creating that nice foam right here. So keep that in mind and then kind of we want to make it look soft, right? So. Here, I'm going to dab my brush in water, use a little bit of white and this color we have mixed, maybe with this gray and white and more of this color. That's good right there. With this color, we're going to add 
a little bit of lighter highlights right in here with the rock. Maybe this is like a little bit of sand showing. in here not too much Okay, I'm going to pick up my number eight brush again and try to add a little bit of a, this color, maybe a viridian, mix those two, and I'm going to try to glaze and add a little bit of a lighter that lighter glaze over these rocks. And we're going to go back to the white again and try to make it even more smoother. here. Okay, with a little bit of white and water and detail brush, we're gonna add a little more details around here. Little brighter details with water and
bit of some rocks right in here. Clean our brush, use the white again, and on the bottom. make it a little more softer I'm going to use white and a little bit of this color here and we're just gonna add a glaze again try to make it a little more cleaner with water and our number eight brush in here maybe a little reflection from the from the light okay we can come back to the river later but for now let's continue adding details to our bushes here and leaves okay so this is what I added thumb amount of white and a little less white here medium yellow touch of sap green orange straight out of the tube medium yellow about the same amount and then more sap green right here and then lamb black straight out of the tube all right so i added also white on the side and what i'm going to do first is take part of this green maybe a little bit of white mix it in with the orange maybe a little more white actually just to create a lighter kind of orangey color in case we need to use it for something for flowers or something okay something like this and then for black I'm just gonna take part of this orange mix it in with the black randomly so it'll still be dark a dark color something like this okay so let's play with these colors and see what we can create okay let's use a little bit of white first and this yellow bright yellow mix those randomly because we're gonna add our details far away right in here so we're just gonna make this a little more brighter on top more fuller Okay, and then go, you can use more of this, just this yellow by itself as you go in.
little bit of this yellow on this side. And then we can use this bright green. We're gonna try to lightly tap and fill in. Cover a little more of the dark background that we added, the base. Okay, go in with this. And then we're gonna skip some here. Same thing here with the green. Maybe a little more. Bright yellow and white. use the green by itself as you go in maybe use a little bit of yellow on top Let's use a little bit of this orange. brighter color yellow this color right here a little bit of white to this rock okay now with our number four brush and this darkest color we have mixed, we're gonna go over some of these rocks.
and add a bit of darker shadows. Continue this tree. You can use your detail brush and you can go over with your detail brush and some water. You can add little grass effects, for example, right here. On this one, we can just add some grass kind of coming down. Why not? You know? And you could add as much as you want little fine details some water and this bright yellow color that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna spend some time kind of adding all my little random grass all over on these rocks on some areas And you can also go over with this color and a little bit of white, go over your rocks again on the top and kind of make them look a little cleaner. For example, right here, right? I want to make it a little cleaner and go all the way. Down 
around, same thing here, use a little bit more white. And you can add a couple little flowers maybe here by this tree. So I'm going to use this kind of yellow and water. Randomly add a couple of little branches, light branches here. This is totally up to you what you want to add. Maybe you want to add some pink flowers red ones, blue ones, whatever you want. And I'm going to use a little bit of this orange, and kind of randomly add. I don't even know what they are, but let's just add some orange flowers randomly. Maybe there's like little rocks for fun, white and a little bit of orange and black, right? Maybe there's like little rocks right in here. Use the black. All right, so I'm going to obviously spend some more time adding what I showed you detailing my flowers and kind of having fun with adding whatever I want, maybe more branches or whatever, rocks or whatever you want, right? Going over everything and kind of doing the same technique, same thing, just adding more layers, right? But the last thing I'm gonna do once I'm done with that is I'll show you, remember that glaze that we added, that light uh, phthalo blue glaze? We're gonna add a little bit of that with our M2 blending brush and sap green and a little bit of water, so I added a little bit of water in my brush and just a little bit of this color we're gonna add a little bit of a greenish tint to our rocks right in here mainly I want this to be bright in here with color right and maybe even go in a little bit not too much you can go up the tree a little bit. Okay, and then same thing here, that green, and kind of glaze it over a little bit and then fade it out. All right, that'll make your, um, maybe even, let's add that glaze, a little bit of that glaze of green, this color actually, lighter color a little bit right here to our underwater rocks just a little bit right here maybe in here so you can kind of stand out a little more
just the light glaze like that. Okay, so I'm going to spend some time just adding a few more details like I did to the trees, but basically that's it. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and learned a lot and thank you guys for watching and being here. If you enjoy this video, it would help a lot if you subscribe and like and share. That would help me continue making these lessons for future. I appreciate you guys. Take care and God bless. Also remember, if you want to win this original painting, be sure to comment your favorite tutorial I've done and what you would like to see more of on my channel here. All the best to everyone. To seal my painting, I'm going to use Gamvar Gloss Varnish. This is my favorite sealer for my acrylic paintings. I'm going to add a little bit and I'm going to use a two inch flat foam brush. And these were great. They're super cheap. You can get them at Home Depot or any art store. And usually I use one brush for multiple of my paintings and then you can just throw it away instead of trying to wash it off. So this will dry within 24 hours, sometimes faster, and I'm going to let it sit here. What's nice about this varnish, it, it doesn't smell, and you could do it inside, and it's super easy to use. So here it is. I hope you enjoyed it.